Hey, Trevor Matthews here. I hope you're having a fantastic week. So I've been deep diving on CO2 refrigeration for six, seven years now. I'm just still learning it. I believe it's going to be the commercial refrigeration refrigerant globally at some point. Uh, so it, if you start learning it now, you're going to prepare yourself for the rules and regulations that are coming up in a lot of countries around the world. And you're going to see CO2 continue to grow in the CO2 space. I found this awesome uh, diagram uh, from Bitzer, this animation. I kind of want to go through with you just to kind of give you an idea of what a transcritical booster system is. And when you start working on CO2, just know that it's nothing to be afraid of. It is still a refrigerant. It runs at higher pressure. So there are some safety factors that you need to really understand. But I really think this is a great uh, diagram and animation that you could show other people. And I highly recommend that you do that. I, I really learn a lot more by training others, by sharing my knowledge. And I'll walk through this uh, with you. And then what I, would, I want you to do is walk through this with somebody else as well. And just get yourself more familiar with a CO2 system. Uh, because you will be working on CO2 uh, refrigeration if you're not already. So, so as you can see up here, here are medium temp compressors. This is the discharge line, okay? As it comes out of the discharge line here, you have a safety valve, and then you have uh, oil separator. There's a little plus sign here. You can open up and see inside the separator what is going on. What the separator does, it separates the oil from the refrigerant. The pressure in this line, you know, can be anywhere between uh, eight, 900 PSI all the way up to 14, 1500 PSI, right? Depending on the ambient temperature and well, the way you want to run it, because maybe you're doing heat reclaim or something. So you are running it in transcritical mode. Um, the separator separates the oil. The oil goes into the reservoir here that you can turn on and turn off if you want to look at it, this little button. And then this goes back and feeds the oil regulators. So, you know, OM5, OM3, OMC, the Carwan modules, there's so many different ones out there. Uh, so to make sure you maintain oil level in there. Uh, and then you have another pressure, uh, pressure relief here um, back into um, the suction. Okay. From here, you're going to the gas cooler condenser. It's called a gas cooler condenser because when it's above 87.8 or 31 degrees Celsius, it is not a condenser anymore. It's a gas cooler. You're only trying to reject heat. You're trying just to cool it down. That's why you call it a gas cooler. From here, you go, you're go. you going into a plate heat exchanger. And then you go into what we call our high pressure valve right here. So this, as you can see here, this is a Danfoss high pressure valve. And then you go into your flash tank receiver. And if you want to look inside, you can look inside. The other valve that works in combination with this high pressure valve here is this flash gas bypass valve. And so what this valve does, it maintains the receiver pressure and this high pressure valve here maintains the gas cooler condenser pressure. So just think of it like that. This high pressure valve is controlling the gas cooler condenser. This flash gas bypass valve is controlling this flash tank receiver. So what it's doing is bypassing gas to make sure you have a good quality of liquid uh, and good pressure liquid going to all your loads, all your cases, heat plate, heat exchangers. So as you can see here, here's the liquid off the bottom of this receiver. It goes down into a filter dryer and then now it starts to feed your different cases. So it can do, it will do both your medium and low temp cases, which is uh, really cool, this liquid line. So we go into a plate heat exchanger here. There's a safety valve there. You really got to remember you never want to trap CO2. CO2 expands so fast, unbelievably fast. Um, so you need to, you got to have a lot of safety valves, check valves around different things. So now we go, we feed this plate heat exchanger. We'll go, we'll go down through the plate heat exchanger, sorry. And then now we feed into our electronic expansion valves, as you can see right here. So these, uh, these EEVs, you cannot use TX valves with CO2 because they do not react fast enough. You use electronic valves. And then you feed into the case. If you want to change it to Fahrenheit, uh, you can. Celsius, oh, start the animation. I want to do that a little bit after. So now we feed this case. 
So we're cooling this uh, island refrigerated case, and then we go over, and then we go back through the plate heat exchanger, the suction line, back into the low temp compressor. Why that it's designed this way? And there's many different designs. You know, you got to check out the manufacturer's design in the rack. Um, but what that is for this plate heat exchanger is really to increase the superheat. So you have like a, a 20K, 25K superheat or a 36 degree or 40 degree superheat for these low temp compressors because that's CO2, um, the way it uh, mixes with the oil, um, when you're below that for your low temp compressors, the oil is saturated and it's really soluble with that CO2. And what happens, it starts to flood back, even though you have, Say, say you had 10 degrees superheat at that compressor or five or 6K, that's not enough superheat because at that point, that CO2 is going to be, uh, the oil is going to be full of CO2 and it's going to start wearing the bearings. And that's one of the biggest failures that they're seeing with CO2 and the compressor manufacturers is low superheat or flood back even though you, because you need to maintain that 20K, 25K or 36, 40 degree Fahrenheit. And then we go back to the low temp um, compressors. Then you can also see right here, as we go down here, we now feed, so that uh, we feed another case, EEV. These are the medium temp evaporators. The other one were low temp, sorry. And then still EEVs, you got sight glasses there. And then now we go into a suction filter and then back to the medium temp. So you'll see on the transcritical medium temp side, you'll be running, you know, say a thousand on your discharge, 450, 500 on your suction. Um, if I talk in bar, uh, you'll be running at say 90, 100 bar. And then on your low side, you'll be running say 30, 30 bar, 40 bar on your uh, suction side, sorry. And then for your low temp, you'll be running around 450, 500 PSI and probably 200, 220 PSI. That's around minus 20 Fahrenheit. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of the way it works. I'm going to shoot the animation on right now. So here's the animation. As you can see here, it's discharging out, gas cooler. You can see that um, you get the high pressure valve here, opening and closing, flash gas. Uh, uh, high pressure valve controlling that gas cooler. Like I said, you get this flash gas bypass valve controlling the, the uh, receiver here. And then as you can see, your liquid feeds both your medium temp and your low temp systems. What's cool about this, I didn't mention this, on the low temp side, you can see the discharges, discharges into the suction. So there's gonna be many different designs. This could be discharged into the receiver, um, depending on the type of design. We'll go just in the transcritical mode and then you go you can go to subcritical. So you don't you don't have all the medium temp compressors running. One thing you need to be aware of, you cannot run your low temp compressors without the medium temp. As you can see the discharge of the low temp is pumping right into the medium temp. So if you try to start the low temp or you shut the medium temp circuits off the transcritical circuits, you're probably going to blow a charge. So just be aware of that. So I think this is a really cool diagram to take a look at it. Just a basic transcritical booster system. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Shoot me an email, shoot me a, a message um, and really use this document. I'm going to put the, the link to this animation uh, in this email, as well as I would love for you to share it with other people. You know, and, and but when you share it, review it with them so you can talk just the way I did to you. So you get better at training, um, you know, the next generation of apprentices and journeymen and refrigeration professionals coming out there. My name is Trevor Matthews. Let's get a conversation going.